Let's analyze a real conversation to find out what makes American English sound American and how you can improve your listening comprehension. In this video, I'm ordering lunch at a drive through and yes, it's just as hard for me to understand through the speaker as it is for you. At the end, I'll even put in an imitation training section so you can work on mastering the American accent. First, here's the whole conversation we'll analyze. Uh, we just need one second to decide, but in, just have an order when ready. in the meantime, do you have any milk? Yes, we do. We have white milk and chocolate milk. I would like non-chocolate, just regular old milk. Alrighty, anything else? Yes, hold on please. A number one. Would you like cheese on No, thank you. But extra pickle, please. Alrighty, and what's the drink with that meal? Coke. Okay, would you like that medium size? Yes. Anything else for you? Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. Should we get him a chicken nuggets or something? Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Alrighty, anything else for you? Yeah. Do you um, see it there? Yeah, maybe a... Four-piece. Okay. A four-piece chicken nuggets. For kids? Okay, pieces on sale for only 20 cents more. No, we sure. just need... 20 cents. For what? What was 20 cents more? A 10 piece? 10 only piece, 20 no. Cents more at dollar 49. No, thank you. Well, we're just getting it for the for the baby. Alrighty, anything else? Do we want any fries yeah. for him? No, right? Yeah, that's it. Now, let's do the analysis. Uh, we just need one second to decide. Uh, we just need one second to decide, but I hear the words one and second being really stretched out, really stressed. One second. I think I stress them even more than I normally would, and I was speaking louder than I normally would because I was talking to this machine. And these pickup windows and order machines are always a little bit off. You're not that close to them. They're not that good. It's hard to understand what the people are saying to you. And so that makes me want to speak extra clearly. But even though I am trying to be extra clear, I still do some reductions because they're just so natural. I'm Rachel, and I've been teaching the American accent on YouTube for over 15 years. Go to rachelsenglish.com slash free to get my free course, The Top Three Ways to Master the American Accent. Uh, we just need one second to decide. First, I drop the T in just. We just need. We do this all the time with just when the next word begins with a consonant. Then I also reduce the word to. Second to decide. T. 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 Schwa. And to, and, to and to decide, but. Okay, in, just have an order when ready. In the meantime, do you have any milk? But. True T could have made that a stop. I think we tend to make T's more true T's rather than stops and flaps when we are speaking into a microphone. In the meantime, do you have any milk? Again, I really make that K sound, whereas if I was speaking to somebody in my room who is close by me, I would probably say, do you have any milk? An extremely light release, but here it was milk over exaggerated. Any milk? Any milk? Honestly, I don't even like fast food. Do you? If so, tell me your favorite thing to order and from which restaurant in the comments below. I love reading them. But okay, in, just have an order when ready. in the meantime, do you have any milk? Do you have any milk? But in the meantime, do you have any milk? These are my longer stressed words in this sentence. But in, okay, just have an order when ready. in the meantime, do you have any milk? But okay, in, just have an order when ready. in the meantime, do you have any milk? Yes, we do. We have white milk and chocolate milk. I would like non-chocolate. So he says, yes, we do. We have white milk and chocolate milk. Now, I wasn't quite sure what he said. White milk? I'm not used to hearing non-chocolate milk described that way. 
I would maybe have called it plain milk or regular milk. So I wasn't sure what word he said, but that was what I wanted. So I said non-chocolate. I would like non-chocolate. I would like non-chocolate. Non-chocolate. Again, longer, more stressed. If he had said white milk and had given me a good true tea there, through the microphone, through the speaker, I probably would have understood. But since he didn't, I knew that was the one that I wanted. I didn't want chocolate, so I said non-chocolate. Let's look at the word chocolate. choc o lit. It looks like it should be three syllables because a vowel or a diphthong is what defines a syllable. But we pronounce this just as two. Chocolate. Chocolate. Chocolate milk. Chocolate. 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 Just regular old milk. Just regular old milk. Okay, so here a couple more reductions. Just regular. T coming between two consonants. It's dropped. Just regular old milk. Old. Okay, so I dropped the D in old. Why did I do that? Sometimes we do this with the word old when we are talking about something that is very normal, very everyday, not fancy, not special. We'll call it regular old. Regular old milk. I don't need something fancy. Just give me regular old Budweiser beer, for example. Regular old milk. It's regular old milk. It's regular old milk. It's regular old milk. All righty, anything else? Yes, hold um, on, please. No. He says, all righty, anything else? And I say, yes. Yes. Up, down, shape, statement. Yes. Hold on, please. So here, I still need to hear what David wants to order. So I need a, an extra minute because I don't know what he wants. So I say, hold on, please. That's like saying, please wait a second. Hold on. And I do a link ending consonant to beginning vowel. Hold on, hold on. Um, hold on. Um, hold on. Um, hold on, please. Number one. A number, a number one? David tells me what he wants. I say, a number one? Now, notice what my intonation is doing here. A number one? That's different than my statement, yes. My intonation goes up because I know that we want more than just this. When my intonation goes up, it lets him know that I'm starting a list and I'm not done yet. A number one. A number one. A number one. A number one. Would you like cheese on it? No, thank you. No, thank you. He says, would you like cheese on it? No, thank you. So I could have definitely just said no, but I think always no thank you is more polite. No thank you. All linked together. No thank you. No is the most stressed word there and thank you f come into the falling off of the pitch. No thank you. No thank you. No thank you. No thank you. But can I get extra pickles? But extra pickle please. But extra pickle, please. So this is interesting. Look, the T comes between two vowel sounds. Normally, I would make that a flat T. But extra pickle, please. I don't do that here. I make it a stop T. And I think that's because I was trying to be more clear. Now, why didn't I make it a true T? I don't know. That would have been the most clear. But I put a little break there. But extra pickle, please. Whenever we put a little lift before a word, it adds extra stress to it, but extra pickle, please. Extra, but extra. So by putting that little break there, I'm bringing even more stress into the word extra. And I know David loves his pickles, so I want to make sure that they get that he wants extra. He wants more than normal on there. Now, when David was talking in the background, he said, but can I get extra pickles? And then I made it singular, but extra pickle, please. It's a little strange to do that because if you're talking about extra something, more of something, that kind of implies a plural. But it is also totally normal and uh, very much so a part of everyday speech to leave the plural off in a case like this. Extra pickle, please. 
But extra pickle, please. But extra pickle, please. But extra pickle, please. Alrighty, and what's to drink with that meal? Coke. Coke. And what to drink with that? Coke. Coke. Again, the up-down shape of a stressed syllable, a statement. Coke. 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 So, would you like that medium-sized? Yes. Yes. Would you like that medium-sized? Yes. Yes. Another up-down shape, clear statement. Yes. 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 Anything else for you? Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag, please. Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. Anything else for you? This is always what they're going to keep asking you after you say what you want until they know you've reached the end of your list. David wants to make sure he gets all the condiments he wants. So he tells me what to say, and I say it back loudly and clearly into the mic. Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. So salt. Loud and clear, up, down, shape. Pepper. Ketchup. In the bag. Uh. So in and the are the only two that were not stressed, and even so, they were pretty clearly pronounced in the instead of in the, which is how I might normally pronounce it because I'm speaking into a microphone. I do notice I do a stop T here. Salt pepper. That's not completely normal. It, it's fairly common to make the tea a true tea in a cluster. I mean, that's actually the official rule, but I've noticed a lot of Americans don't do that. A lot of Americans still make that a stop tea when the next word begins with a consonant. Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. Should we get him a chicken nuggets or something? Should we get him a chicken nuggets or something? Now you can see the tone of my voice has totally changed. It's much softer and I'm speaking more quickly, less clearly. That's because I'm talking to David, who's right next to me, instead of into this machine that's several feet away from me. Should we get him up? Should we get him up? Okay, so I drop the D. The L is always silent, but I drop the D. Should we? Should we? This is really normal in American English. Should we do this? Should we do that? Should, should, should. Should we get them a? Should we get them a? So get is the most stressed there, and I end it with a flap T because I've dropped the H in him. I've made that reduction. So I link get and him with a flap T. Should we get him a? 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 Should we get him a chicken nuggets or something? Chicken nuggets or something? Chicken nuggets or something? Pitch going up because it's a yes, no question. Chicken nuggets. Both of those are stressed syllables. The word or reduced or something or something said very quickly linked on to the next word or something. Yeah. 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 David says sort of quietly from the back seat. He's not very close to the microphone. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Alrighty, anything else for you? Yeah. Do you see it there? Then I say, yeah, very loudly, very clearly. He's asked me if I want anything else. I say, yeah, I do. I do want something else. Yeah. 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 Do you see it there? Do you see it there? Do you see it there? Now my tone is quieter again as I'm talking to David. Do you see it there? Very smooth, all connected. It goes up at the end in intonation because it's a yes, no question. A little bit of stress on C and then everything is smooth and connected. Do you see it there? It there? A stop T in it because the next word begins with a consonant sound. Do you see it there? Do you see it there? Do you see it there? Yeah, maybe a... Uh... Four piece. 
David says, yeah, maybe a... And I answer, for peace. I'm finishing his sentence. For peace. Because I know that Stoney wouldn't eat more than that. For peace. All connected. Smooth. Smooth intonation. For peace. For peace. For peace. Okay. A four piece chicken nuggets for kids. <laughs> then I say a four piece. A little break. Chicken nuggets. A four piece chicken nuggets for kids. So even though I am speaking more clearly than normal, making my stress words even more stressed, I'm still doing some reductions. The word for gets reduced to for. For kids. For kids. Because even when I'm trying to be extra clear, I don't really mess with reductions that much because those aren't what we need to be clear. It's the stressed words that need to be clear. So as those are longer and clearer and more fully pronounced, the reduced words can still be reduced. A four-piece chicken nuggets for kids. A four-piece chicken nuggets for kids. A four-piece chicken nuggets for kids. No, we just need... Okay, then he says something back to me. Who knows what he is saying? It's a terrible system. I can barely understand. But I know that he's trying to upsell me. What does that mean? He's saying if you pay a little bit more, then you get a lot more. David is interested in this. No, we just need... 20 cents. I say, no, we just need... No, we just need... No, we just... Drop the T. Just need... But in the background, David says, sure. He's like, for 20 cents more, why not? So he says, 20 cents, and I say, for what? For what? Because I don't know. I literally could not understand the man through the drive-thru. For what? Reducing for. For what? Stop T at the end of what? For what? For what? For what? For what? What was 20 cents more? And I think David doesn't even know what the guy said. He just knows if it involves more chicken nuggets, he wants it. So then I say back to the guy into the speaker, what was 20 cents more? What was 20 cents more? Again, my intonation goes up at the end. And what, what was the most stressed word there, most clear? It was the most important word. I was saying, I do not know what you said. What? What did you say? What was 20 cents more? With a stop T after what? What was? What was? What was? What was? What was? Now 20, I dropped the T here. Very common. Even in a stressed word, even when you're trying to be extra clear, 20 becomes 20, 20 cents. 20 cents. 20 cents. 20 cents more. 10 piece. 10 piece, no. He says, a 10 piece. And I say, 10 piece? Intonation goes up. 10 piece? Smoothly connected. 10 piece. 10 piece. 10 piece, no. No, thank you. No. Statement. No, thank you. Now, he keeps talking, but at this point... I can barely understand him anyway, and I know I do not need that many chicken nuggets. So I say, no. No, thank you. No. No, thank you. No. No, thank you. No. No, thank you. Well, we're just getting it for the, for the baby. Well, we're just getting it for, for the baby. We're just getting it. Just getting it. Connecting that with no T makes a smoother transition. We're just getting it. Stop T for. I'm thinking about what exactly to say. What we're just getting it for. What we're just getting it for. What we're just getting it for the for the baby. For the for the for 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 for. The word for reduced both times. Just the schwa. So the F R sound for 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 for. For the baby. For the baby. 
smoothly connected, smooth change of pitch. For the book, for the baby. For the book, for the baby. For the book, for the baby. Alrighty, anything else? Yeah, that's it. So he says, anything else? And I discussed a couple things with David. We decided no. So I go, yeah, that's it. Now, this is a little bit strange because if the question was anything else and the answer is no. I think my saying yeah was growing out of something that David and I had just been talking about, deciding do we want this, saying, you know, I think we're all done ordering. Yeah. Yeah, we're all done ordering. Yeah. That's it. So that's it means nothing more. I'm done ordering. That's it. That's it. Smoothly connected. Stress on that. And a stop T at the end of it. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Let's listen to the whole drive through order one more time. Uh, we just need one second to decide, but... Okay, in, just have an order when ready. In the meantime, do you have any milk? Yes, we do. We have white milk and chocolate milk. I would like non-chocolate, just regular old milk. All righty, anything else? Yes, hold um, on, please. Number one. A okay, number... A number one? Would you like cheese butter? No, thank you. No, thank you. But can I get extra pickles? But extra pickle, please. Alrighty, and what's the drink with that meal? Coke. Coke. Yeah, would you like that medium size? Yes. Yes. Anything else for you? Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag, please. Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. Should we get him a chicken nuggets or something? Yeah. Uh, what else is there? Yeah. Alrighty, anything else for you? Yeah. Do you um, see it there? Yeah, maybe a... Four-piece. Okay. A four-piece chicken nuggets for I kids. Five pieces on sale for only 20 cents more. No, we sure. just need... 20 cents. For what? What was 20 cents more? A 10 piece. 10 only piece, 20 no. Cents more at a forty nine. No, thank you. Well, we're just getting it for the for the baby. Alrighty, anything else? Yeah, that's it. In this training section, you'll hear each sentence fragment twice in slow motion, then three times at regular pace. Each time, there will be a pause for you to speak out loud. Imitate exactly what you hear. Do this training twice a day, every day this week, and see how the conversation flows at the end of the week. Uh, we just need one second to decide. 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 But, 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 in the meantime, do you have any milk? 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 I would like 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 
non-chocolate. 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 Just regular old milk. 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 Yes, hold um, on, please. Yes, um, hold on, please. Yes, hold on, please. Yes, hold on, please. Yes, hold on, please. A number one? 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 No, thank you. 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 But extra pickle, please. 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 Coat. 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 Yes. 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 Salt, pepper, ketchup in the bag. 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 Should we get him out? 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 Chicken nuggets or something? <laughs> Chicken 
chicken nuggets for some reason. 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 Yeah. 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 Do you see it there? 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 Four piece. Four piece. Four piece. Four piece. Four piece. A 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 four piece. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. Chicken nuggets. For kids. For kids. For kids. For kids. For kids. No, we just need. 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 For what? For what? For what? For what? For what? What was 20 cents more? 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 10 piece no. 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 No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, thank you.
No, thank you. We're just getting it for the... We're just getting it for the... We're just getting it for the... What we're just getting it for the What we're just getting it for the for the baby 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 yeah, that's it. 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 I hope you've enjoyed this video. I absolutely love teaching about the stress and music of spoken American English. Keep your learning going now with this video and don't forget to subscribe with notifications on. I absolutely love being your English teacher. That's it and thanks so much for using Rachel's English.